Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of UA Eats. I'm UA, and today we have a really, really special review for you guys. We're gonna be eating at a restaurant that I've been meaning to try for many, many years now, and today's the day when I finally get to make that dream come true. We are gonna be eating at Le Bernardin. I believe it's pronounced Le Bernardin. Unfortunately, there's quite a bit of construction going on all around here, so the outside of this area is not quite as beautiful and sophisticated as I had hoped, but hopefully the inside still looks nice. Now, this is a super bougie, super fancy restaurant we're about to eat at. It's opened by the famous French Chef Repair. It's regarded by many people as one of the best restaurants, if not the best restaurant in the whole world. You heard me, the whole world, not just New York City. Pretty crazy, right? I'm pretty excited to try this place, but we're uh, coming up close on our reservation. I got all dressed up for this. You know, usually you see me a lot more down to earth, right? The way I dress, but their dress code is just that they want you to wear, I think, at least a collar, but I decided to get the jacket too, since we're eating at a three Michelin star restaurant for the first time ever on this channel. So I wanted to look the part. We're coming up close to our reservation, so let's check it out. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, so just real quick, they don't allow video recording in here, so I likely will have to get footage of B-rolls and then afterwards edit it, but we'll see what we're able to get away with. So just briefly showing the menu here, La Bernardine, they have their chef's tasting menu, which is for at lunchtime, 325 per person. But that's a little bit out of our budget, so we're gonna do this 127 per person, three course prefix, which honestly, that's pretty good for a restaurant of this caliber. And the way that this works is you can choose one from these appetizers. These are all appetizers and some are almost raw and some are barely touched. As it says up there, I hear good things about this octopus, so we'll do octopus. And then you can choose one of these main courses. And these are main courses. Most of them are seafood. This is a restaurant that specializes in seafood. Although they do have filet mignon, and while that's tempting, it is a $25 extra fee. So let's do salmon. Then dessert comes afterwards, so let's order. All right, so first they brought out an appetizer, and this is a salmon spread on some little pieces of toasted bread and a nice looking butter. So let's grab one of these and spread this salmon on this cracker. Bon Appetit. Let me try a little bit more. I guess I can talk a little louder than this. Let's try another bite of this salmon spread. That's nothing special, to be honest. It's only okay. I mean, you have a video. Uh, I will do a focaccia. Just a focaccia? Any other choice? Uh, a focaccia and a baguette. And baguette. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so they just spread out the bread and a lot of starch here, a lot of carbs. Good thing I didn't have too big of a breakfast. Getting a bit louder in the restaurant, so I feel like I'm able to raise my voice a little. Uh, yeah, so this salmon has like a really smoky, flavor, like a really mayo-y, creamy flavor. It kind of reminds me of some of the fillings they put in Japanese rice balls, like onigiri in Japan, that they even serve at 7-Eleven. But to be honest, I'm not really impressed with this. It's basically just like a fish salad, like a tuna salad, and uh, I don't know, it just tastes like smoked salmon and mayo, and uh, not much else, so I don't know, maybe I'm not super in the know, but Let's try this focaccia bread first. I love focaccia. I'm a big sucker for focaccia. I've definitely had better focaccia before, even at Italy, to be honest. The focaccia is pretty cold. Like it tastes like it just came out of the refrigerator. That might've been an intentional choice, but 
Not really for me. It is fluffy, but it's not really very doughy. I don't know, it doesn't really taste that much like focaccia to me. Even if you go to Italy, you can get a better one. Or Wegmans. Let's try the baguette. Yeah, nice crust, nice and crunchy. And it's like a full loaf of bread that fits in the palm of your hand, so. Let's try a piece of French baguette. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, the mini baguette's pretty good. It's really, really crispy. I was holding it closer to my mic there. It's really crispy, not too airy on the inside. Unlike the focaccia, it does kind of have more of that doughiness, more of that chew, so I dig this. But Tina says that this butter is incredible, and just wow, look how smooth this butter is. Getting excited for this. It even smells really fresh and like freshly made dairy butter. Wow. I might need to add more. Let me just add a whole lot, a whole lot. Maybe that will help. Mmm. Yeah, I didn't add enough. I didn't add enough. If you add more, it's pretty good. Like at all the great steakhouses of New York City, I've had some pretty smooth and delicious butters there, but this butter is the best butter I think I've ever had in my whole life out of any butter I've ever had, including that Amish butter in Lancaster County. It is just so smooth, so clearly made in the house and freshly churned. Like it's got that nice oily, milky, creamy flavor. And once you add enough of it, you have to add enough of it because the crispy uh, crust really covers up some of the flavor otherwise. But if you really smother it with the butter, go big or go home. Just smother it, smother this bread with the butter and you'll like it. All right, our food has arrived and this is Tina's. What did you order again? This is lobster with some Thai sauce, Thai curry sauce. Lobster with Thai curry sauce. Well, enjoy Tina. And this is what I ordered. This is the octopus with a chorizo sauce and a puree in the middle. I actually didn't know at first. I thought that was just a plate, but that's a puree that just kind of matches the plate backgrounds. But guys, I know this is a bougie Michelin French restaurant, but look at how tiny this portion is. I mean, just look at how small this is. It's like a little tiny little hot dog that you cut into a small piece for a kid or something. I mean, I spent 127 bucks for this lunch, and at steakhouses, I have spent that much, but I get loads of food. At Katz's Deli, I spend 30 bucks for a sandwich. I get a huge sandwich, but here, 127 bucks for this? I mean, look at my butter knife for scale. Just take a look. I mean, it looks pretty. There's no question about that. Definitely a work of art. I believe that hot cuisine originated in being food for the king and his royal family, so I can definitely see uh, you know, the influence there, but I wish the portion size were bigger. So time to try a bite. It's the taste that counts, right? If I can pick it up. Okay. I was able to pick this guy up. Let's try one of these octopuses. Octopi. Mmm. Oh, you want to try one? Yes, please, please try one, please. Oh, they gave me a spoon, so I thought I was supposed to use a spoon, but let's try another one of these. This is fantastic. It may not be a big portion, but I've never had an octopus that was so tender. So often octopus is like a racer or like a piece of rubber, but this is it's so soft. It's almost like eating, not mochi, it's almost like eating a Korean topoki, if you know what that is, like a rice cake. Tastes and feels like it. Oh. oh, that is outstanding. No, I only wish they gave me a big plate of this, like a bowl that I could scoop at will into my mouth. But it's charred beautifully on top. Like the char of it is perfect. I already talked about the texture. These other ingredients on top, to be honest, I don't really taste them much, but they probably play some sort of supporting role. But it's a perfect char that brings out like that delicious charred seafood flavor. Nice sauce too. Let me try dipping it in more of the sauce. Now I dipped it in more of the puree and the chorizo sauce.
Okay, so the sauce is only okay. The sauce actually kind of covers up what I like most about the octopus. The sauce flavor is quite neutral and not very strong. What I like about this octopus is it's soft, completely soft texture, like rice cake, and the beautiful char that's not at all burnt, only crispy and nothing else, which pairs perfectly with the texture. So eat one straight up is the way to go. Mm. Too bad it's already gone after just a few bites. So I guess it is what it is. Yeah, you enjoyed yours? Yours looked like a bigger portion than mine though. It is. Nah. It's more meat. Yeah. I feel like yours tastes better. Mine was pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. It was like the perfect appetizer, the perfect hors d'oeuvre. Yeah. Except for the sauce. The sauce is only okay, but if you just eat it by itself, it tastes good. I almost feel like the sauce was mostly for decoration. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like it's I- cool when they like pour it on top of the octopus. Yeah. I wish I could have filmed them pouring it. Oh well. Like edible paint. Let's wait for the main course though. Tiramasa. 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 Okay. Okay, the salmon has arrived, the main course, and this is a grilled salmon, I believe. Uh, lightly grilled, slightly raw, but not entirely. And they said this is a truffle sauce, so. I gotta say, guys, it was a really long way. I would say that was like maybe 30 minutes, maybe almost 40 minutes even. Really, really long. But let's dive into our near raw salmon. While the salmon on top looks kind of nice, because I like sushi, I don't mind that it looks more raw. To be honest, I find that the sauce does not look that good. It kind of almost looks like mud or something. Not as beautiful as the last dish. But we'll give it a try, why don't we? Let's dive in. Wow, look, I can cut it with just my fork. So smooth. So tender. Unless you just really don't like raw food, you're gonna love this. It pretty much melts in your mouth like butter. I feel like it could be a little bit more salted. The sodium is a little bit on the low end, but they make up for that with some nice grill flavor, like a charcoal flavor, a smoky flavor, that somehow like they're smoking the salmon, but it's not like a smoked salmon. Like smoke flavor is just permeating throughout the whole salmon. It's delicious and flaky, as you can see by the inside. The truffle sauce tastes good, but the truffle flavor is not that strong. It smells really truffly, but it doesn't taste super truffly, but this salmon is just so incredibly soft and smoky. This is one of the best pieces of fish I've had in my entire life. Wow. Mmm. Oh, wow. Well, that is fantastic. Okay, I take back what I said about the sauce. I said that the sauce didn't have too much flavor. The sauce is a essential component of this. The second piece was less good, but the third piece, I dipped it in more of the sauce. You really want to dip it in as much of the sauce as you can. It really helps to make you not miss the lack of sodium so much. It just that savory like umami flavor from the truffle sauce even if it doesn't taste like truffle just the more savory flavor of it with the incredibly soft salmon wow that was outstanding i like sushi so that's just me but i love this philosophy of lightly grilling the bottom to add the wonderful benefits of a cooked fish while having the flavor of Michelin quality sushi on top. Out of this world, oh my goodness. Uh, I have never had a fish dish or any dish like this in my entire life. Whether or not it's worth 127 bucks, I'll leave that up to you guys to decide, but I'm glad I tried it. I only wish that they had left some of the skin on and added like a little bit of crispy salmon skin, which is my favorite part of a piece of salmon to this. So you get some crispiness with the softness and the mushroom flavor, and then you would have the best of all worlds. But hey, uh, you know, chef repair, based on this dish alone, he clearly knows what he's doing. I'm sure he has a reason for everything.
Okay, our desserts have arrived. Tina ordered a pistachio dessert. And I ordered a dark chocolate tart. And wow, I mean, is this like a architectural design or is this something I can eat? I almost feel bad digging into this. It looks like a, it truly is a work of art. Oh my goodness. It looks like a space building from like Dune or Star Wars or something. Wow, as much as I'd love to just look at it and admire the crazy artistic ability all day, gotta eat it. It's UA Eats, not UA Looks after all. Oh man, guess I'll do it like this. I don't even know how to attack this. Okay, broke off a piece. Okay, first a bite without the leaves on top. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, it is, it is molten on the inside, like a molten lava cake. I did not expect that. Oh, such a rich dark chocolate flavor. That was, oh, that was fantastic. One of the best dark chocolate desserts I've ever had. As you can see, just look at how molten it is on the inside. This isn't no Domino's pizza molten lava cake that is just syrup on the inside. Look at that delicious molten dark chocolate, what I presume was once a frozen piece of ganache. But now let's eat it all together. Let's eat it now with some ice cream and let's eat it with a piece of the leaf, balancing it like a piece of the Eiffel Tower. Mmm. Mmm. The chocolate on top, like the leaf, it kind of provides just like a crunch. It doesn't have too much flavor on its own, but the crunch is, it just kind of makes the dish less gooey and adds a good textural component. The ice cream is cool and it contrasts with the warm molten chocolate. And it also almost has like a sweet, like almost a sweet flavor in like a fruity way. So everything works together and the dish obviously was once very, very beautiful. Too bad I broke it. I broke this amazing structure, but maybe we can, maybe we can call Chef Repair to fix it. Get it, Repair? Okay. Anyways, I'm gonna finish my dessert and then we'll share some final thoughts. All right, guys. Well, we just finished eating at Le Bernardin and yeah, I gotta say, um, I thought that at the beginning of that review, I probably thought that the review was gonna skew in a different direction. Like I was ready to say that, okay, yeah, I mean, the portions are small. Yeah, the food is good, but it's only a tiny bit. And I don't really think that this is necessarily worth it. But that salmon was just, oh my goodness. One of the, one of the best pieces of fish I've had in my whole life. And that dessert, wow. Also one of the top desserts I've had. Very, very, very good. Now, it's unfortunate that this restaurant is, you know, it's a three Michelin star restaurant, so no surprise. It is a little bit on the stiff end and not the most relaxing place to eat, in my opinion. I don't know, maybe I, I kind of grew up middle class, so maybe I'm just not necessarily accustomed to these super posh places. I know a lot of the steakhouses we eat at are pretty fancy, but they may be fancy, but they're still relatively loose environments, I would say. But at Le Bernardin, three Michelin star restaurant, I wasn't able to film, so any footage I got, I just kind of sneakily got. But after eating that fish and after eating that dessert, I gotta say guys, 127 bucks, I think it was a fair price. For a three Michelin star restaurant, it really could be much worse. It's still not one of my favorite restaurants in New York. Like I still have places that I will frequent more often than this place and that I will prefer. So for me, it's not even talking best restaurant in the world. It's not even the best restaurant in New York City for me. And it wouldn't make my top 10 list either. But it is a great experience. It is great food for an interesting experience good food and to experience a three Michelin star restaurant and critically one of the best restaurants in the world for a pretty reasonable price, all things considered, I think it's worth trying out. But anyways, guys, have you guys eaten at Le Bernardin before? And what did you think of it? And what are your favorite spots to eat at in New York City? And have you eaten other Michelin star spots that you think are worth the hype or not worth the hype? Let me know in the comments because great minds eat alike. And as always, if you like my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. That way you stay up to date whenever I post another video. I'm gonna head back home now after my fancy meal. So until next time, I'll see you later.